Hi guys, welcome to Having a Yarn. My name is Casey and welcome to another solo sewing video. So I'm here in my um, kind of renovated um, sewing space and today as you might hear outside it is quite rainy. It's a nice cozy cold rainy day in the middle of February, beginning of February which in Perth is a very odd thing. So I decided today to have a bit of a sewing day and I thought like why not kind of show you the process of making a skirt. It's not a tutorial by any stretch of the imagination but I just kind of wanted to show a little bit of the process of what goes into making a skirt and kind of bring you along and show you a few little bits and pieces. Okay so the skirt that I am going to be sewing this afternoon is the Anna Allen uh, denim button button up skirt. I've made two other versions of this skirt so far. So the first one that I made here was just, this was kind of my test version. So this was out of a, like a micro cord um, in this just navy color, really nice and soft. I've had this in my stash for ages and um, this was my practice one. Um, it ended up being quite a lot bigger. So I ended up doing the larger size on the pattern, which was uh, the size 20 and based on my waist measurement and then I graded down to a size 16 in the hips um, but still it just ended up um, way too big um, so I ended up just doing a really just dodgy job on um, fixing up and putting a couple of little darts in the waistband at the side to bring it in a bit still a little bit big and it's quite baggy through the hips and then my proper version which I am so in love with oh my god I love this skirt so much um, I mean, can't even handle it. Uh, I've worn it twice now already. I finished it, I don't know, last weekend maybe. Um, so it's out of my Rifle Paper Co. canvas fabric. I literally had a metre of this in my stash from like two, three, four years ago. It was one of the first fabrics I ever bought. And I only had a metre, so it was really about finding a pattern that would work for it. And I think this Anna Allen um, skirt was just, it's so simple. There's no zipper fly or anything, um, really easy. So I, yeah, was able to kind of cut this out. I had to cut it a bit shorter than what I wanted, but rather than doing like a doubled over hem, I just kind of overlocked it and did a single hem on it. Um, and I just think it's turned out really beautiful. Love the buttons on it. And so I ended up for this one cutting the size 16 at the waist, graded to 14 at the hips. And it fits perfect, so that's probably what I'm going to do the same for the skirt today, which is going to be made out of this really, really gorgeous kind of wool. Anyway, that's my plan. Um, I will show you some snippets. Don't really know how I'm going to film this video because, as you probably can tell, I am not a pro at this. Yeah, I'll just show you kind of bits and pieces, the cutting out, the sewing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll catch up with you soon. Okay, doke. Hi there. So I'm just going to have a quick chat with you um, while I'm laying out the pattern pieces here. The pocket piece here, I'm not going to be using this. We've got our waistband, we've got the placket piece which we need the, um, to cut two of and then so my skirt pieces here, you can see that they're kind of cut in two. So what I do for a lot of my patterns is I cut along the lengthen and shorten line so that way just depending on how long I want the skirt I'll just kind of move the pattern piece so this one here I'm probably going to maybe add two inches to and I'm going to cut this fabric actually has a little bit of stretch to it so I'm thinking I might just cut a straight size 14 what I do is I generally don't do the darts until um, after I put the skirt together that way I can actually just kind of change how much of the dart I want to use to get that perfect fit. So anyway, let's go. So that's all my bits and pieces cut out now. So I've got my two plackets and the interfacing. I've got my waistband and some interfacing and I've got my two skirt fronts and my skirt back and that is all you need for this pattern. So first of all all I'm doing is ironing the interfacing of the pockets in the waistband to the wrong side of the fabric. So with the interfacing you can always tell the difference between the glue side and the non-glue side because the glue side is slightly shiny. So I'm just going to place the glue side down and then importantly I'm going to turn 
this down a little bit and I'm going to take off the steam because you don't want steam when you're ironing on interfacing. So if you're particularly precious about your ironing board, I would suggest putting something underneath this because these tiny bits of interfacing that is going over the edges will actually stick a little bit to your ironing board cover. Okay, so once the iron's ready to go, I try not to um, move the iron too much. Instead, I just kind of press. And then I just did what I said that I didn't do. But anyway. Basically the purpose of interfacing is just to add a bit more structure and stiffness to um, some fabric. So you'll often do it on waistbands and plackets because um, a lot of stress gets put on the plackets where you're uh, putting in buttons, holes and buttons. Beautiful, that part's all done. Okay, doke, on to sewing now. So I've got my front and back pieces here. I'm doing the side seams to start with. So I want to be doing right sides together and sewing the side seams. So what I want to be careful of at this point is that you've got one side, so this looks like it's the centre front and this is the side seam. You want to make sure you get the right one because the centre front is going to be perfectly straight, the side seam is going to be slightly curved. So for side seams I don't always pin. If I'm sewing with a fairly stable fabric like this one here, and I just need to finish off the seams on the overlocker. You can also do flat fold seams but um, I'm being lazy and don't really feel like it. Cool. And now we've got a skirt. It's starting to look like one anyway. Okay, so I've just pressed the side seams um, to the back of the skirt and I've just kind of quickly had a look at it, look with it on just to try and determine the length of it. So generally the hem is supposed to be a double hem where you put it over twice. But what I'm going to do is just going to overlock the bottom and then just fold it over once just for a really narrow hem. When we get to the seam line here, I'm just going to make sure that I'm overlocking it so the seam is pointing towards the back for this one. So coming up to the other seam line, so the seam we want it to be pointing this way, not this way. So as you're going along the fabric is going to want to push the seam the other way. So you just kind of make sure that it's not kind of pushing up by catching on anything. Then I could iron the seam um, down before I sew it, but again, you probably find that I am a fairly lazy sewer, <laughs> so I'm not going to bother. And I'm just kind of eyeballing how much I need to fold it over as I go as well. Just a quick thing about the correct and the incorrect sides of fabric. So I used to kind of stress and be like, oh, is this the right side or the wrong side? But in the end, if you can't figure it out, does it really matter? Probably not. Okay, so the next step is the front plackets. So a placket, if you don't know, is pretty much just a piece of fabric that is going to be at the front of the skirt. Um, and it just adds a bit of stability for where the buttons and the buttonholes are going, basically. We've got one of the fronts of the skirt here with right sides together. So now we can tell easy what the right side is because our hem is obviously hem to the wrong side. So right sides together. Just pin it and sew. And again, I'm not being particularly precious, so I'll just put a couple of pins in because this is going to extend at the bottom anyway, which is kind of what we want because the way we finish it off, we want a little bit of an extension um, to get like a good crisp finish. One packet sewn on. Okay. Placket sewn on. Next thing what we have to do is basically you iron the placket towards the, the sorry, the seam line towards the placket. Um, so you kind of push it that way and then just trim it down. So at the moment it's half an inch, so we're going to trim it down to a quarter of an inch. Okay, so sorry, I'm not sure what the lighting is like pointing this way, but I just wanted to kind of show you. So what I'm doing is just kind of pressing this um, seam line towards the placket, which you can see is not doing actually that much of a good job. Just the fabric's a little bit bouncy, so it's not pressing hugely well and then what I need to do is then just iron down half an inch here this bit basically folds back on itself with the right sides together and all we're going to do is sew a little line just straight across here it's basically where the magic happens so I've sewn up both of the plackets where I've turned them back in on themselves right side together and just sewn right at the hemline of the skirt 
And then what I want to do is just trim off this little bit of excess and then you just basically turn it through and then you can see you just get a really nice finish there at the bottom there. If I put it down on here, maybe you'll be able to see is that this will then get sewn down on the inside. It's going to cover that seam line and we get a beautiful finish at the bottom there. So I'm just going to do that on both sides. Okay, so now would be the time. Both of my plackets are now done. Just love the finish of the plackets. It's just like super nice and crisp and looks great. So normally now I would attach the waistband, but I've done this in a bit of a different order and I haven't done my darts yet. And so I'm gonna just basically pin it on myself, see how much of the darts that I need to take in. Okay, so I just thought I'd quickly bring you in here and just kind of show you a little bit about what I mean when I'm um, kind of pinning the skirt here. So I've just put it on and just popped in a couple of pins at the front here just to kind of hold it where the buttons would. And then all I've done, is just kind of pinched it where the darts are just to try and figure out how much I really need to take out. So I've done that there as well and then the two on the back. So and that just gives me a bit of an idea once I take it off I'll measure that distance and I'll be able to figure out okay how much do I actually need to take off for each of these darts. That's kind of what it's looking like so far. Just realized how dirty my mirror is but that's okay. Okay, so now that I've established that I pretty much want to use the um, existing dart lines, what I'm going to do is I've just got my pattern piece here for the front. Um, so that's the centre front there, so that's why the pattern piece is upside down. Just marking where the dart is there. That's the point of the dart, so I'm just popping in a pin there. And then I'll just mark the top of the dart there as well. Take that out, my pin's still in. And then I'll just draw a line should have a pin. Okay. All four darts are in. All I'm going to do now is you basically just fold them over, match the top of the dart legs there, pin it in, and then your pin should obviously match on both sides to the line that you just made. And then I just find where the point of the dart is, get it nice and flat. And just keep it on. Then we can see that pins on the other side are also hitting exactly where that dart line is, so you know that you've marked it properly. Cool, so all of my darts are now pinned in place. All I do is basically sew a line of stitching along the darts there. Cool, so I've just tried on the skirt and the darts are absolutely perfect. All I'm going to do now is sew from the top down to the end of the dart. Okay, all my darts are sewn. Um, so all I need to do now is kind of press them. And with darts, I always kind of press them towards the back of the garment and then I will attach my waistband. So all you do for the waistband is Find your centre back and then it's basically halfway here to there, pin from the centre and we're just going to pin it all along the top, right sides to right sides. So the waistband is now on. Pretty much you just were repeating the exact same thing that we did for the placket. What I'm going to do is just trim down this um, seam line a little bit and then I will just press it and then we'll do the same thing where we kind of do it, um, turn the, it backwards. We just sew along this line here, so right along the front of the placket to ma match it. We do our magic little turny thing and then we sew the waistband down. So I have the waistband all pinned and ready to go. And what I love about this pattern as well is that I I love doing the hem early because to be honest, finishing a garment with a hem, I find it so annoying for some reason. It's like I think you're just so close to it being done and then just to hem it just seems like a nuisance. It's so nice to kind of like do a line of sewing on the waistband and then like essentially apart from buttons and buttonholes, it's done. Okay, so the waistband is all sewn on, pretty much finished apart from buttons and buttonholes. We've got square wooden buttons, circle wooden, wooden buttons, the circles look better. 
Okay, so before we get to the buttons, can we all just take a look at this uh, rain radar for a second? So, that there is, where's Perth gone? I think, oh, there's Perth there. What on earth is going on? Anyway, there is a lot of rain happening right now. Um, okay, so, so all I've done is just kind of visually place them where um, I think they look nice. So I like to have a little bit of a gap at the bottom because it just allows the skirt, that bit of movement when you're sitting down to be able to open up. Um, and then I've just evenly spaced them basically. So, and then what I normally do is I will do the buttons holes first. So what I will do is basically just mark the position of each of these buttons with a pin. And of course there's a million ways that you can measure where buttons and buttonholes need to go and all that jazz, but this is the way that I decided to do it tonight. So this is the centre of the button. And then what I need to know is how long the buttonhole is gonna be. Because my machine has a, a one-step buttonhole foot and what you need to do is you need to line up this section here with the bottom bar of the buttonhole so which is going to be obviously a certain distance from the center so what i'll do is i'll get a scrap piece of fabric i will do a test buttonhole and then i'll measure how far from the center i need to then mark the bottom bar of each of these buttonholes um, and then that's where i'll make a mark with my chalk pen so i know where to place the bottom bar so just quickly before i start that so my machine basically you just pop the button that's the reason why i do the buttonholes first is because i need one of those buttons to kind of sit in there so i um it automatically knows how big to make the buttonhole i switch this over to the buttonhole selection here so i'm gonna leave my tension as is my width i'm going to take down to about three and then i'm going to put my length at about one to start with I've just got a little bit of test fabric here. Cool, I'll be happy with that. And now I can basically see how long the actual buttonhole is. So I'm going to measure how wide it is. So it is five eighths of an inch. So that just means that the bottom bar is two and a half eighths of an inch. Two and a half. And then this one here, I'm going to see what the five is and decide kind of where I want the buttonhole to end. I don't like the buttonhole to end too close to the edge of the fabric. So I'm going to go about there, which means I want to start my buttonhole here. So I can take all those out and then sew all my buttonholes. Another reason why I do my buttonholes before my buttons is that if you kind of misposition one of the buttonholes slightly, I'm going to use the buttonholes to be able to position where I need my buttons to go. Whereas if you've sewed your buttons on and then your buttonhole ends up being slightly off, then you've got to remove the button to then reposition them. Okay, so now I'm going to just open up the buttonholes. So there are several ways that you can do this. Um, I do actually want to get myself one of those um, little buttonhole chisels where you pretty much just get a mat like you do for a cutting on um, and you kind of just like yeah chisel a hole through because using a unpicker which is what I use there is a chance that you can slip and just go straight through your stitches so I just push it in at the beginning of the buttonhole and I just push it very carefully and stop a little bit before the end so I just heard that Christopher Plummer, who is the Captain Von Trapp in The Sound of Music, passed away today. Um, and so that's very sad. The Sound of Music is one of my all-time favourite films. I've watched it a million times with my mum. You know all the words to all the songs. Um, so yeah, a little bit sad. Um, so I definitely have to watch The Sound of Music again soon. Hey, buttonhole's done. And then all I do to mark where I want to put my buttons is to place it on top 
just mark inside. Cool, so they're marked out, so we just need to change the machine over to the button foot and get these buttons sewed on. And then, let's get this done. Okay, so this just gets taken off. Take the button out the back there. Grab all my buttons. And then I'm just swapping over to the button foot. And then I want to change this to a zigzag stitch. And I will change it to zero, my length, because when you're sewing a button, you don't want it to be feeding, basically. Um, you don't want it to be moving backwards or forwards. You just want to be sewing in the same spot. And then the width will be determined in a moment by the holes on the button. So what I do is I line up the foot exactly where that pin is, remove the pin, and then I raise the foot again while holding the fabric so the fabric's exactly where it needs to be. And then just pop the button in. And then I just line things up using the width. So we've got the first um, hole there. And I do it with the wheel rather than with the foot pedal at first because if you haven't nailed exactly where it's going into, you're going to break the needle. So I can see as it's going down, it's not quite wide enough. It's not going to hit the second hole, so I've just widened it up to four. It's going to hit both holes perfectly. And once I'm sure that it's going into both holes nicely, then I'll put my foot down. Line it up, take the pin out, put it up again, hit the button. Line the holes up just to make sure the button's sitting exactly where you want, and put your foot down. And we're done! Cool, I'm just going to try it on and show you guys. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you like this style of video because I really enjoyed making it and I would love to make some more. Yeah, like I'll probably need to improve audio and camera angles and lighting and all that jazz. Um, but it's been really fun to kind of share this and share my knowledge of sewing and stuff. Um, but yeah, let's just try this on and see what it looks like. Okay, and here is the finished skirt. Um, sorry, the lighting's probably terrible, but I made a joke on Instagram the other day that it always seems that whenever you finish a garment, it's like, the middle of the night, terrible lighting, my hair's always terrible over that stage, and you would think that you would just be like, okay, I'm just gonna wait until it's, it's in the morning, I'm gonna get some good natural light, I'm gonna put some makeup on before I take like my official photo to put on Instagram, but anyone who sews knows that is never the case. So excited by finishing your garment that you just take the most terrible photo and put it up anyway. I love this skirt. It's super comfy. It's really just nice and soft. Has a little bit of stretch to it. Yeah, I really hope that you kind of enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys again next time. Bye.